another episode of Explain the Hype. This time I'm going to be looking at the critically acclaimed-ish album from J. Cole, 2014, Forest Hills Drive. J. Cole is one of those rappers that's amassed an incredibly annoying stan fan base where no matter what he releases people just eat it up and tell you that you're not intelligent enough to understand it if you do any sort of criticism against it. You'll also find these fans lurking in the realms of Drake albums and even Kendrick Lamar albums. I mean, as much as I love Kendrick, I've got to be honest, the fans of his are like that too. And Drake, J, Dre, 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 J. Cole is a bit of a strange one for me because he's kind of been put at the top of the food chain in rap. I don't know why I did that and then not do that, but the food chain in rap music, he's being labelled as one of the conscious rappers, um, which I do see, I do get, but at the same time, I'm just kind of confused as to why he's always put on the same level as Kendrick Lamar. Like, anyone who's listened to any of those artists would know that Kendrick is quite clearly the superior one in terms of rapping ability and actually making catchier songs. Proof of that being that Humble was Kendrick Lamar's first number one. J. Cole hasn't really had that much mainstream success with his singles. A few of his tracks I know did break like the top 40 in America and stuff like that. But in terms of straight albums, J. Cole has always been an artist that doesn't really put out that much thought-provoking material. I don't know why he's labelled as this super creative, conscious rapper who's got bars and bars and bars when he really is just okay. This album to me is proof of that because it's sort of like a concept album, you know? Forest Hills Drive is supposed to be looking back on J. Cole's life and going through the different stages, um, sort of focusing on things before he was big. And honestly, this could have been done way more interesting than it was. Just think of like Naz's Illmatic where you've got a 16 year old kid that's coming out with all of this incredibly detailed uh, music and stories, and that's only at 16, and J. Cole doesn't really come out with that many great stories on this album, to be honest. And this album's like so hyped up by a lot of people. It's like, it's supposed to be this incredible hip hop album that is lyrical as well, and I'm not really getting that much on the lyrical side. We'll start off with January 28th here because this is the one that's named after his birth. So you'd sort of expect some kind of interesting narrative on this track explaining some kind of story from when he was born, but it isn't really that much. All he really goes in to say at the end of the track is that a god was born on January 28th referring to himself, but I've also heard that this is actually an ode to Rakim. Um, I don't know, maybe Rakim as a feature would have been a pretty cool idea, but um, instead it's just this very jazzy, soulful track that where J. Cole's kind of just sitting in the, sitting in the, like, the cruising lane, you know? He's just really kind of flowing on the beat, not really popping out, uh, not really going past at like 50 miles per hour he's just he's just taking it chill and much of the album is this really that's kind of it a lot of the album just goes for this jazzy soulful 90s very 90s inspired hip-hop sound which i love but it does come across as more of like j cole is a fan of that sound so he really wants to do that sound rather than j cole doing it in a really well-made manner. Like it's sort of like Joey Badass without the personality. Cause like Joey Badass has always quite obviously took influence from the nineties, but Joey Badass has so much personality on his tracks. He's got such a great voice on in his music. And J. Cole doesn't have that, I don't think. Saint Tropes is, or Tropez is a good example of this. It's just a very casual track that I don't really feel like J. Cole has that exciting, interesting ideas. It's kind of weird because I just want to listen to this album and get something from it. And I don't really feel like I do. And the issue, I think, again, is within the production, 
um, just kind of floating in that same similar sound the whole way through. But then there are like three or four tracks here that break out of that sound and they don't really fit either. Apparently, I'm not saying like apparently, I'm talking about the track apparently, it, it's just like a pop R&B song. Like it could be anyone doing this song really. It just kind of feels a bit like one of those tracks that was made for the radio. Like it could have just been a single on its own. It could have easily been left off the album in my opinion and just been a single because I know this was one of his biggest hits. And honestly, it just, I don't know. I just feel like it's just not really great for the album. It's got a decent hook, but honestly, it probably would have sounded better if someone else was singing the hook. Uh, that's just my opinion. I think sometimes you do need a good singer to bring out a hook. We also have Wet Dreams at track number two. Now, this is one of those tracks that has always been mocked by people that don't like J. Cole. Like, oh, well, you think he's a great rapper? Have you listened to Wet Dreams? It's such a dumb song. Uh, it is. Like, it is. I, I kind of like it though. It's always been one of those J. Cole songs that I can actually play quite regularly because of that beat. That boom bap beat is so freaking good. I suppose it kind of does work as like a virgin anthem too, you know? I mean, honestly, not many people could relate to the story he's telling. I'm sure not many people out there lost their virginity in the way he did. Probably FIFO from Dead End Hip Hop did. <laughs> That'll be like the only person out there that did. But anyone else probably listens to this and think, yeah, I didn't, it didn't quite happen like that for me. Um, but as a song, I do kind of like the stories telling. I do find it quite funny. Some funny lines in there, kind of like how he's trying to like make sure he keeps his boner and stuff like that. But as the second track in the album, it doesn't fit at all. Like it, it just is so out of place to go from January 28th to that is the weirdest transition I've heard on a hip hop album like in the past few years. It just makes no sense to go from that to that and then go back to that jazzy sound on um, 03 Adolescence. Like they, again, it's like apparently where it's just kind of there for the single factor, doesn't really add to the album. So the overall experience of this album isn't flowing particularly that well, in my opinion, considering again, it's such a highly acclaimed album that fans love, and yet it's barely even that consistent. No Role Models is kind of another one of those, but I do like this track as well. It is, it's alright. I mean, I say I like it. It's not really something I go back to on a regular basis. Again, I just think it's because J. Cole's singing most of the song. To call him such a great rapper and have like a handful of tracks on this album where he is singing, he's focusing more on the singing, does kind of make, kind of make me wonder what his shtick is. Is he... Is he wanting to appeal to a wider audience by doing that? Or is he just trying to flesh out his ideas and sing as well? It's absolutely fine that he does that. He's not the only ever rapper to do that. It's just sometimes I'm thinking, does he pull it off as well as people think he does? And the people that think he does are kind of letting him get away with it. I, I don't know. I just think he's not as good of a singer as he could be and he's not great as a rapper as he could be. Which brings me to think that he actually is taking a lot more from his contemporaries than the stands of his admit to, because on the one hand, he's trying to be like conscious and thought provoking like Kendrick and not even reaching anywhere near that level um, in terms of lyricism. And then on the other hand, he's trying to be a Drake by doing the sing rap thing. Like he's not really that original. Whilst at the same time, going through the motions with the 90s jazzy hip-hop sound that was done better in the 90s and done better by other modern day rappers too like Wiki, Yorul Droog, even Joey Badass as I've already mentioned. So we went platinum with no features, that's all you got, like that's the only defense you've got for, 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 for J. Cole, like that's it, that's, that's it. It's a pretty impressive feat. Yeah, it's, it's impressive. It was like the first time in 25 years, I think, uh, I read somewhere, um, if that is correct, correct me if I'm wrong, but yeah, it's pretty impressive to get to that point. But this album really is crying out for features, honestly. It could maybe do with a few hooks sung by some people coming in. It could do with a different rapper because J. Cole, for an entire hour, does get a little dull. Like it's the one of the few albums that you could look at and think this definitely needs features. Like it really could do with features. 
And ironically, I'm pretty sure there is like an uncredited feature anyway on this album, on the track G-O-M-D. Um, there's a guy going like, to the window, to the wall, that, that whole shtick, the, that, that thing, that, that's definitely a feature. Who is that guy, you know? You're, gonna, you're not going to credit him and then just be like, ah, yeah. It, it went platinum, there aren't features here. The, this guy, he's not a feature, he's just, he, he, nah, he's not a feature, don't worry, don't worry. In all fairness though, that track is kind of clever because he is sort of, ta sort of taking the piss out of like generic hip hop that's done that whole um, thing in the past on that track with that hook. Um, which brings me to another thing on this album where I did see somewhere that J. Cole had, had, had said that this album is like anti-Hollywood. Um, there aren't that many moments on the album that really speak out to me as being anti-Hollywood. Um, Unless I'm missing it, but I don't really feel like that was executed in the best kind of way. But again, if you do feel like there is some kind of um, underlying theme, then do do mention in the comments if you are a J. Cole fan. Because again, this is me asking fans to explain the hype. And I've got to bring up um, A Tale of Two Cities. That's a pretty clever track, um, coming from two different perspectives of um, these two people living in the same place. Um, one guy has it kind of rough and the other guy doesn't have it so rough. I do kind of like that. Just sonically, I don't think the track was that great. Um, it was kind of like You by Kendrick Lamar where the music to the track is a little ugly, but that's the point of the track. I do get that, what he's doing on this song particularly, but it just doesn't really make for a very good listen. Like you're not listening to it and enjoying it. Um, you're just kind of listening to it for the story, which is fine, and I do kind of like that J. Cole does come out with at least one great story on the album, considering he is supposed to be this, like, raconteur. So yeah, outside of a few catchy-ish tracks, and that one good storytelling track, A Tale From Two Cities, or whatever it is, that's all I've got. That's all I've got from this album. I think it's honestly one of the most overrated hip-hop albums of the past few years. I could probably name 100 other hip-hop albums from this decade that I would rather listen to and um, If you want me to try and do that and I could list them off in the comments that might be kind of fun, but uh, Now that I've said it maybe I'll regret that but I do probably think there are a hundred better Hip-hop albums this decade than this platinum with no features classic album from j cole if you agree with me let me know if you don't agree with me do tell me as well because i do need to know what it is about this album that everyone loves tell me and also if you know a j cole fan share this video with a j cole fan and then see what they think and then they might get angry at me and it can be it could be kind of funny so yeah 2014 forest hills drive don't get the hype someone explain the hype well, let me know if you like this review uh, subscribe to the channel for more videos like this and more reviews and more lists and all that kind of stuff and uh, that's it have a good day have a good day